Hello. Welcome to Eugene, Oregon, where I'm in the woods today at a very special place to do a review. The review is kind of two parts. And now you're definitely wondering, you're not just in Eugene, Tobin, you're in a cemetery. Well, yes I am. Happy Halloween. Today is October 30th. Tomorrow is, of course, Halloween. And I'm not just at any cemetery. I am at the Eugene Masonic Cemetery. My middle name is Eugene. The founder of Eugene is a fellow by the name of Eugene Skinner. He's the first one to truly settle, first white person to truly settle here. And he was also the first governor of Oregon. Back then they called it Eugene City. We've since dropped the city moniker. This is his family plot. Those are all the original headstones. We've since added as a memorial this. I believe this one was put here about 20, 30 years ago. Most of Eugene, Southern Oregon's founders are buried here from the Chamber family. That's the large Chamber family plot there to the Whitakers. I'll include most of that in my B-roll. There will be uh, some video at the end. Sorry, I've been hiking. My wife and I went on a great hike just before setting up here today. So, to what you really came here for, besides goblins and spooks and freaks like me, came here to talk about the artifact. I kind of thought it was fitting for the location. Because to me, it looks like something that you might find, you know, from 2,000 years ago in an Egyptian crypt. But it also makes me think of something that you might have found in the mid to late 1800s, which most of these people uh, who have been laid to rest here walked the earth during that time. The other thing that I wanted to review today, it is a newer soap to me. I've now used it four times. It's one of the ones that came back. I did a blind buy on it. Rustler's Ridge. I am loving this fragrance. So enough about all that. Let's go check out my setup over yonder and see how my beautiful bride is doing. Back to my lovely bride, who's reading a book, joined me on this adventure. My tripod, my mirror, and my towel. My handy dandy Nightmare Before Christmas backpack that I always take with me. I am using the set of Wrestler's Ridge. My Samog Mistura Badger Boar Mix. And the word Mistura just means mixture. It's old Portuguese and, and then uh, Italian. And then, of course, the star of the show, the artifact. And I'll be using a first use Permasharp blade. Welcome. Hope you're all doing well. Again, happy Halloween. Right up front, I want to talk about the soap, and then we'll move into the rest of the, the video. We'll put chapters on this one, I promise. I know I say that sometimes, and then I don't. Um, but this one, I definitely will. So... Look for chapters down below if you want to get straight to the razor. Wrestler's Ridge. The notes, the scent profile. Madagascar Vanilla. Ozone. Prickly Pear. In the heart notes, we have Sage and anima Animalic Musk. And in the base, Spruce and Cedar. So very simple. Madagascar Vanilla. Ozone. Prickly Pear. Sage. Musk. Spruce and Cedar. There's a dog behind you. There's a dog walking up behind my wife all by itself. One second. It's not ours, it just showed up out of nowhere. Once again, it goes to prove which will, that you never know what you're gonna see when you're out and about in Oregon. Let's go over the notes real quickly. 
Madagascar vanilla. I learned a lot about vanilla the past few days. I actually started looking it up. There's four different types of vanilla. And this is not a synthetic. Synthetics are made from wood pulp and clove oil. Originally from Mexico is where they originated. And in Mexico, there's this bug that you can only find in that region of the world that would pollinate them. And so when the Spaniards first started shipping vanilla overseas, they couldn't get it to grow anywhere. And for hundreds of years, they couldn't get it to produce anything. And it's, it's an orchid. I'll put a picture right up here. And then in the 1850s or something like that, a fellow discovered that you can pollinate them by hand and use this little stick and goes around pollinating them. And so in Madagascar, that's exactly how they do it. They pollinate it by hand. Bought this hat, hat a while ago. Sterling has some great merch, guys. Let's show off my shirt real quick. This one was a gift from Gareth. Thank you again, Gareth. Shave Supply and the Wet Shaving Store are definitely my personal two favorite vendors to do business with. So Madagascar Vanilla, um, the four different varieties of real vanilla. It's more robust, more flavorful. It is a premium vanilla. The next note, oh, something that's really cool too, is it six months just to grow the orchid, and that takes six months of manually processing the vanilla before it's even ready to be sent out, like in the little sticks or in the stem. Ozone is our second note. Think like the way the sky smells right after lightning strikes, and that's can be described as clean, slightly sweet. Pungent is another description that I found for ozone. Next is prickly pear. I never actually ate a prickly pear, but now after looking into it more, I want to. So I'll put a picture of it here. It's a cactus, and the pad of it, they say you can eat it, the pad. The pad is the flat part. It has a texture like green beans and tastes like green beans or asparagus, is how it's described. The fruit, when ripe, my mirror's over here, but now the sun is shining on it. See it on my face, woo! So I might not be able to use it. I gotta go with the flow, yeah. We're looking right in your guys' eyeball. So the fruit, sweet, fruity, they say it tastes like melon or kiwi is the most common descriptors that I found. This is my first time using Permasharp in this razor and it's fantastic. Real quickly, let's move through the other ones. So we have sage, a lot of you are probably familiar with sage, earthy, herbaceous, we have animalic musk and uh, that one's pretty self-explanatory for a lot of us. One cool thing about musk is that it helps radiate and amplify the other fragrances that are found within the soap or within the perfume. And uh, there's actually a lot of modern perfumes that don't use them today because they're going for like the clean, fresh smell. Um, but actually it's proven that humans are attracted to musk. And uh, so a lot of the you know small artisans and other type of perf perfumers have been going back to musk. And I love it. I think it's pretty fair to say that almost all of my favorite scents have musk in it. Round it off the spruce. Spruce is similar to pine, not quite as fragrant. And then cedar. And cedar is warm, woody. And this fragrance, I like how my wife described it, and I completely agree, would be a warm autumn fragrance with notes of vanilla, pine, 
but there's no pine in it. It's spruce. That's where she's picking up the pine. That's where I need to pick up that piney smell, a light pine smell, because it's coming from spruce. And then the warmth is coming, I think, from the, the musk and the cedar. Howdy. Hello. All right, so let's get into what most of you came here for. The artifact. The artifact will retail for fifty nine ninety five five nine nine five. I think that it's a steal at that price. When I first received it on Monday of last week, today will be today is my seventh shave with the razor. When we first received it last week and the first couple of days into it, I didn't know what the price was because I hadn't asked Douglas yet. My wife and I were both guessing double that, like 120 to 130. The case alone is a $30, $40 case, $50 case. I could totally see people charging $50 for the case alone. And then you get three platinum strangelets, packs of platinum strangelets with it. So that's a total of 15 blades. This razor, I could see it selling for $75 easily by itself even $100, uh, solid piece of Bakelite. I love it. So let's get into it and let's talk about it as I shave. So your mileage may vary, but for me, and in my experience, and I've tested this out with razors that have similar blade gap exposure and angle, a lot of guys, and you may be right, I may be wrong, a lot of guys think that open combs are more aggressive than a straight bar. And I disagree with that. What makes the razor aggressive is the angle, the gap, and the exposure. All the comb is doing is allowing your hair and the lather to flow through between the combs. That's it. Two of my most mild razors is my Ascension Select and my original dual open comb from artists from, from Phoenix Artisan. Now, the Ascension Select, I can get it to be in a medium efficiency razor by doing about a quarter of a turn, because that's one of the adjustable ones. If I do it a quarter of a turn after tightening it, I end up with a medium efficient razor. I haven't removed any of the teeth from the comb I haven't changed the angle or the exposure. Maybe, the, no, I don't know. It's just the gap. That's the only thing that's changing is the gap. This razor is not aggressive. You do not need to be afraid of the comb. Uh, I agree with what Subi, Josh Perkins said, Subi Shaves. He said it was about a medium to just under medium. And I would agree if, if five is medium efficiency, I would definitely land it between a four and a six. Um, a couple of the blades that I've used, I first use, I'll just put pictures throughout the video. I won't talk about all of them. Uh, if you follow my Instagram, you've been seeing that I've been posting them. The only blade I've used twice is a Platinum Strangelet. And this is again, my first use with the Permasharp. The blade gap on this is 0 0.015 of an inch. 0.381 millimeters. That dog's still over here wandering around. So the gap is very mild. Um, put that into perspective. A blue tip Gillette is 0 .2, 0 0.020. The regular flare tip is 25, and then the red tip is 30. I did not measure the exposure and I did not measure the angle. I might I might do that when I get home and if I do I'll put it down below. Sun's moved a little bit. I can use my mirror a little better now. The handle and the weight of the razor is perfect. It's head heavy which is nice because the razor is lighter like I talked about in my unboxing video.
for me, it truly feels like the, uh, the Platinum Strangelet. It's the only blade I've used twice. And if I had to have one favorite, it'd definitely be the Platinum Strangelet. I'm also loving this Permasharp, but that's also, you know, the more you use something, the better you get with it. A razor is a tool. And the first time you pick up a new tool, whether it's a, you know, a drill, a rifle, doesn't matter what it is, the more you use it, the better you get with it. Which is one of the reasons why I don't like to just do one shave with a new razor and then call it good. I've learned with my own razors, you've heard me say in videos before, that when I buy a new razor, I'll use it for seven to 10 days straight. A new base, I'll use for around that, maybe less than that, before I actually form an opinion on it. There's been bases that the first time I used it, from different artisans that I wasn't crazy about it but after after lathering it two or three times I learned how to work with it and love it still remember when CK6 came out that it's a thirsty thirsty base just like this one here I'm using the, the original Crown King but for me at least I need to use something a handful of times before I can confidently say whether or not it's for me I absolutely love this razor. This will be a go-to razor for me. And it feels like the Platinum Strangelets were made for it. And I think that's deliberate. I think that Douglas was trying to create a razor that would be perfect for his blade. If I'm not mistaken, this is the first all-new razor to come out since he released the Platinum Strangelets. I'll attach some photos. Um, so you can see here that there's these channels on the top of the bottom plate. At first, at first look, you would think that they assist with the lather and moving it away from the comb. But I've actually tested it a couple of different times, and every time that I've taken it apart, there's no lather between the top cap and the comb. None. Uh, where I do see it benefiting is one, it looks really, really cool, and two, it helps with rinsing it. I reached out to Douglas after testing it a few times um, with all the stuff, like with Batch 214. I didn't want to know, know the notes from Phil at Bricktown with JPJ and then another thing, I didn't want to know the ingredients and different stuff. So I like to go into things blind and form my own opinion before asking someone. So I developed my own opinion. And then I asked Douglas, I sent him the photos that you're looking at and I asked him if these were supposed to be, you know, lather channels or, or what they were exactly. He said, no, they just look cool. And that they would assist with rinsing but that's about it. Do some cleanups here. This has quickly become my favorite Bakelite razor and it'll definitely be one of my go-to modern razors easily. I have a lot of Bakelites, uh, most of which have been made by PAA. There's only two Bakelites ever produced from PAA that I don't have. And those are the early ones. I do have the original Bakelites, the Stormtrooper, the Blood Ox, and what's the black one called? I can't think of it. And then I have the complete collection of the Monster series and then the, the filament. Definitely medium efficiency to just under. You can see I got my Adam's apple right there. And that's actually, I don't remember getting myself with this razor at all prior to that. And it's partly because I'm using this phone screen and the lighting isn't perfect. So that's definitely not on me, not on the blade. This Perma Sharp has done exceedingly well, very well. I have to say that this may be my new favorite blade in the razor. Uh, if not second favorite blade, it's performed just as well as the, the Strangelet. But with each, with each new shave, I'm getting more efficient with the tool. 
So let's just pop it open real quick. So this is for fun, right? No running water. All I've done is dip it in my little stainless steel bowl there that's full of water. See, there's the channels. You can see there's no soap in there. The white swirls that you're seeing is just part of the razor itself, the Bakelite. See, it won't wipe away. Absolutely fantastic razor. I can't recommend it enough at $60 is going to sell like hotcakes and so if you do want one you need to be ready at release day i don't know i don't have any idea how many doug has on hand um, i know he's been super busy with all the fall releases and the new soap releases like black shroud and otra let's get into the splash let me pause it real quick so i would recommend this razor to new wet shavers as well as experienced. If you don't own a Bakelite razor, this is the one that I'd recommend you buying. If you can afford the $60, jump on it. If you can't and you're looking for a Bakelite razor, I'd highly recommend the Filament, which is a single slant, also available at Phoenix Artisan. The Monster Series, like the Alphantasma, that's a double slant. Um, both are made of ABS. The, the filament and the Monster Series are ABS. But the Monster Series, they're more aggressive. So if you're looking for your first Bakelite or Bakelite from PAA, my first choice would be this guy, the Artifact. And then the filament, which is the clear one. Absolutely loving, loving Wrestler's Ridge. I missed it when it first came out. Got it on the back of my hand. It smells like pine. It's amazing. One of the things I like to do is I'll put one on here, and then like half an hour later, I'll put it on the other hand, and then I'm getting top notes and like heart bass notes. So here I'm into the bass. Pine. Woody spruce. Cedar. A little of that musk is still there. I put this on hours ago. This I put on just before I was doing the shave, when I was doing my shave of the day photos. Kind of earthy, kind of still the, the vanilla lingers. It's not a strong vanilla, guys. Um, I would classify it as a unisex. It is one of the ones that my wife would definitely wear. Um, but because of the musk and the earthy woodness to it, it's a man's fragrance as well. If your wife likes vanilla, this is a must. Just be careful, she might steal it. It's not, it's not feminine. Not feminine at all. I'm confident, but I'm not that confident to wear a feminine fragrance. Oh, yeah. So at the end of the video, I will have some B-roll stuff um, of this fantastic razor. I can't recommend it enough, seriously. 110% new wet shavers, experienced wet shavers. It's amazing. Kick ass. So, with that said, I want to thank you all for joining me at the Eugene Masonic Cemetery. Wish you a happy Halloween and happy holidays. They'll be here before we know it. I can't wait. I need to get the EDP for Space Nog. It's a must. Oh man, I hope he brings that back. Y'all take care, and Doug, Bran, Hux, thank you. I didn't say this at the beginning of the video, so I'll put it at the bottom. For those who don't know, this was a gift with the expectation that I would review it. No affiliate codes. I'll make no money, no profit. I get nothing from you buying this razor or any other products from PAA. I'm simply suggesting to you products that I use and products I believe in, and that will always be what I do. Thank you. Y'all take care. And hey, it's a little big things. Enjoy them before you end up in a place like this and you can't leave. The guy to my right.
he'll be here tomorrow. Y'all take care. This case is so cool in so many different ways, but one thing I really like about it is the way that it secures the razor. You cannot get it to fall out. If you put this in the case, it's not coming out until you tug on that string there. A quick addendum to my shape video at the Eugene Masonic Cemetery. We came in through one gate. There was a sign saying that the mausoleum was open from one to four. I've been there probably five times in the past. The mausoleum has never been open. When we went up there, there was people playing music inside. It looked very much like a church service, like a funeral service of some sort. We didn't go inside. I just took some pictures. We went and did the shave. At about 4.15, we went to leave. We drive down the hill to the gate that I came in through, and it was locked. So I put the car, my wife's car is what we took, put it in reverse, drove all the way back up this hill, looked around for somebody, couldn't find anyone. There was another gate. Walked all around looking for a place to get out. If we would have taken my truck, getting out would have been no problem at all. Then I noticed at the back gate that I might be able to fit. And so I just used my boots, my feet, and like one foot in front of the other. And I measured it and it was about six boots wide. Went back up to my wife's car, measured it, it was about five boots wide. So I said to my wife, we don't, she was talking about calling an Uber. I was like, no, I think we can get out of here. And so I you know, did the boot measuring, measured her car with my boots. And the following pictures is me squeezing through. We made it out. We beat the zombie apocalypse. Thanks again.